about myself, been building pretty much my entire life uh, since I was a young kid and uh, up until now. And I've got two little ones now that are getting into building as well. Um, I kind of build everything, like to build everything, like to explore with every kind of theme there is. Uh, right now, I'm kind of on a big apocalypse uh, kick right now. And I've got a project uh, going on where I uh, convert all the uh, Lego modulars into an apocalypse kind of uh, theme kind of take it to any dystopian kind of world you like. I kind of build with the thought of Fallout in mind, but uh, I don't put a lot of actual Fallout stuff in so they can be kind of taken into uh, any uh, any uh, dystopian world that you, you think about. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen here and I'll show you some of my stuff. All right, so Apocalypse uh, Techniques and the Modulars. So I uh, started this project a few years ago when we did uh, a Fallout Shelter Collaborative at uh, BrickCon uh, 2016 and then uh, BrickCon 2016 and then every year after that we've kind of done a similar uh, collab where everybody builds uh, a shelter uh, that's 8 by 16 put anything you want into that little shelter room and then we click them all together and we create a giant Fallout Shelter like this. Uh, thanks to Diana and Lettuce for posing in that photo. Um, so the first year we kind of, this is all we had. We had a bunch of floors lit it and then the topper on top was just your basic kind of wasteland thing. And uh, did a few years of that, but we wanted to expand more and go bigger and have the top really be alive as much as the, the shelter itself. Uh, so we came up with, or sorry, I came up with uh, doing a whole wasteland town on top. And this is what we got here. So we have like a red rocket station uh, built by my good friend, uh, Alan Corbell. And then we have a bunch of destroyed buildings. And if you can see kind of in the middle, there is a diner um, and the theater at the end cap there. So that's how I first got into the modules was simply just building a topper uh, for the fallout shelter. And after that, absolutely love doing these and I continued on and I've made two more and I continue to do uh, the rest of the line of modulars that Lego has done. So uh, pretty soon I'll be coming out with another one, but um, I'm just going to walk you guys through kind of how I went about it, uh, what parts I use to kind of really make something look destroyed or dilapidated, worn out, um, and just look like it's been through a uh, been through been through the ringer so uh, moving on i'm going to show just a couple slides of just some of my key parts that i use throughout all my mocks and uh, we'll start with these ones these are these are the bread and butter pieces uh believe it or not i use for the mocks cheese slopes the uh the modified uh corner missing tile l tile and then the quarter round tile and the sand green color is the uh, the one by two kind of slope with that uh double concave slope there uh, just really makes anything look worn away and chipping and when you put them all together and rearrange them it shows that like pieces are missing in the sidewalk or in the cement especially if you put them on the side on snot bricks or whatever um, these aren't the colors I use um, my color palette really ranges from a lot of muted colors um, grays dark grays and all the sand colors and then for extra terrain or wood or just anything else, using um, wedge plate can give away, can really show that that broken away feeling, especially on a floor or in crates, as I can show you in a couple other photos here in a minute. Um, yeah, and then again, just a lot of a lot of just muted colors with these as well. So when I started the modulars. So this is the very first one I did. This is the theater that was that became the first modular apocalypse module we did for that fallout topper. Um, started with the groundwork. I do use the instructions simply only to give me the framework of the building. Um, that's it. The stories that I want to retell in these apocalypse things, I come up with myself, what I want to destroy, how I want to destroy it, the colors I use, that's all based on how I feel and how I want to, uh, how, how I want to tell the story of the apocalypse um, building. Um, and where I first start with that is determining how aged is this building? Is this fresh off of an apocalypse happening? Is this been around for a hundred years, 200 years? So that can really tell us how far we want to go with weathering it out and destroying it. 
are windows left in it? Is it just broken glass? How overgrown is it? How muted? How much colors have faded? How much chipping is there away? So on. Um, so when I did the theater, um, I really wanted that marquee to stand out. I didn't really know how. And then uh, when I got up to that section of building it and putting it on, I just, um, I don't know, not really sure. It was a couple of years ago that I built it. So, but I really felt like that was something and having it collapsed and smashed on the ground, just I thought was just be a great idea for it. And then having it to start to be overgrown and retaken back by nature. So as you can see, kind of in the main pillar of the, epo uh, of the, uh, of the theater there, you can see all those quarter rounds um, for chipping away on the cement and the detail there. And then, um, and then a lot of like the browns and the grays, just more muted colors just to kind of show so it wasn't as, as poppy as the, the original version is. The, uh, the terracotta roofs are not red anymore. They're more browned and dark redded out. Um, kind of a key thing I use with colors is when I look at the original modular, I take a color, so say it's a green color, it'll probably come down to an olive or a sand green. I just, that's how I convert over is pretty much anything to the sand colors. Grays kind of stay the same color. Dark tan can kind of stay the same color or it can replace tan, it can replace white, it can replace yellow. Yellows and whites kind of have a hard representation in Lego, uh, the Lego color palette. So you kind of just change as you go. And I will switch up colors entirely in case just to make sure that the, the build in its apocalypse form uh, just ends up being all one solid color that just doesn't look good. So you want to just maybe switch some colors around. Uh, red, on the other hand, because sand red is impossible to get. It's so rare. Um, I've just had to forego trying to do anything like that. And I'll switch to a dark red or my browns for converting out red. Uh, the diner the diner was the second one I built. Um, this seems to be everybody's most favorite uh, mock. The diner mock modular itself is one of my favorite but lends itself again to a lot of key uh, key things to, to kind of show it off. And that being that big uh, curved window right in the front could just be really smashed out and really just bring a lot to the, to the build. And then the, uh, the signage on top, just um, happily place the N and the R on the ground to kind of change out the wording up top there and kind of bring it more into the apocalypse world. And for those of you that know the diner, uh, it's that teal green around the um, around the jukebox kind of on the second and third floor there. That's the radio station. Um, again, another hard color to kind of convert out. So sand green was just kind of a, a natural choice. And to get the uh, the slopes that normally come with it, um, just use cheese wedge all the way around and then broke it apart. And again, this one. This one I wanted to put kind of right in the right at the start of the apocalypse. So it's still got its glass. It's still got some of the pink. It's still got some of the, the, the turquoise colors in there. It's not fully muted out. The building is still looks in fairly decent shape other than boarded up windows from maybe people staying in there compared to the uh, the theater there that was probably maybe maybe 10 years in as I kind of think it would have been so. And then the back again, um, just looking at details when uh, when I build these I look at a lot of the metal work, um, like the railings, the steel stairs, anything like that. As we see in movies and television and stuff like that, that stuff tends to rust out and always happens to break apart right at the most dire, the dire time so breaking those apart and using uh, the one by three. Um, little lightning uh, lightsaber rods and just other parts like that in browns and in blacks just to kind of show that distressing of um, of the metalwork around a building and then adding like a little skull at the bottom and then a little bit of vegetation in the olive colors not too bright colors because it would all just be worn down and trampled or all vegetation might have died and a little zoom up there just to show the broken glass uh, clear cheese wedges they're the uh, they're the savior for making broken glass. So uh, that in one by two clear plate as well and one by one. So just a mixture of those three just kind of randomly thrown together and you can have yourself look like broken glass. Putting it to the edges of the window when a window gets smashed out, that's kind of where they would maybe remain. And then you get the jagged sharp edges and stuff. And then in there you can see the uh, the janitor ghoul trying to clean up the mess there of the apocalypse. So the green grocer, 
was uh, this is a result of 2020. Um, I got the idea because it is a grocery store in the name. It's got the little shop at the bottom and in the in the living quarters up above. Right at the peak of everybody hoarding toilet paper is uh, how this one came to be. And that's why there's the guy on the bath, uh, on the toilet there, and he's on his last uh, ticket. Um, but when I did this one, I wanted to go even further. I wanted it to be almost completely destroyed. I wanted to start showing the inside of the modulars, which if you notice on the first two, I kind of just covered it over and I didn't actually build anything on the insides because when I was doing them for the other Lego conventions, people see it from a distance. You're not really going to be able to see inside. So it was, it, to me, it was more to concentrate on the outside facade uh, to show that than to try to concentrate and showing stuff on the inside that nobody happened to really see. Um, but I felt with this one that I could almost tear off the whole front of the building and show the inside. So the big, um, kind of steeple on the right hand side there left the right hand side to show what it was and what used to be there but at the same time it's all fallen on the ground and you can start to see the insides as well as the second floor there you can see where the floor is falling away and again that's where I've used the wedge plates to kind of just show the floor in disarray and falling apart and there's a big pit and using just random uh, barrel pieces um, like the one with the, uh, the, light, the lightning rods and that little Technic T um, connector there to show just piping and rebar in your floor just to kind of give it a little bit more life. Um, the roof on the green grocer is just uh, two by two by three high uh, black slopes. Um, I went with these one by two, these new rounded one by two plates just, just for something just to change it up just that much more and Maybe it shows the roof being a little bit more weathered. So, and at the bottom of the green grocery here, you can see again where I've been using those wedge plates is where those, uh, in the original model, there's two crates there that have the, uh, the groceries in them, the, the apples and whatnot. Um, I thought, cause that was just a, a highlight sand point out of the original model to keep those barrels, uh, those crates there. But again, they wouldn't have survived the apocalypse and probably would have been smashed. So, um, used uh, some snot uh, plates there and then the um, brown uh, one by three and one by four wedge plates. And uh, the awning up above too using brown and dark red just to kind of show that there used to be an awning there and then now the covering and the wrappings are, are long gone. Everything just anything you can add or kind of show what the origins are take it back down to its bones kind of helps bring to life the uh, what used to be there and really and really help uh, tell your story and again at the back here it's starting to overgrown you can see this is maybe like a back alley lots of vegetation lots of garbage and old uh, old boxes and uh, crates and everything with garbage and junk left behind from days long ago and again using slopes up above the awning of that other door there and brown uh, brown uh, steel railings for the the ladders and it's all falling apart showing the inside again to uh, the smashed windows and looking through the front door at the um, what would have been the the refrigerator there that would have housed all the uh, the cool uh, groceries like your milks and stuff is the door is smashed open and and uh, everything's been pilfered and uh, finally, this is the final mock I did. I actually did during uh, earlier in uh, beginning of summer there. And this is the uh, Grand Emporium. This one I kind of wanted to make as a refuge to where everybody would have gone in the city to kind of try to hold out their days and survive as it's a big mall. So there would have been lots of supplies, lots of ample room for people to stay and kind of set up shop and maybe set up like a little fort or something like that. Um, again, because there was so much story to tell on the inside, I needed to kind of pull away one of the walls to allow um, line of sight on the inside there. Um, left it open for interpretation of why that wall would have fallen down. Was it during a war and there was like a missile shot through there or was it an earthquake or something crash into it? 
kind of leave a lot of the interpretation of why things are and how things are and what happened and where where is it going now up to the viewers to kind of come up with their own stories so i leave a lot of stuff kind of open-ended like that used a lot of barricades and stuff at the front here to kind of see if they were trying to protect themselves and then ultimately left it where there was no minifigs left and it looked like they had been abandoned in a hurry even though they have this perfect rooftop garden going on that they were surviving on and then i added the garden too just a lot of my mocks were lacking in vegetation and green and just to br have one of them break it up uh, enough just to kind of give a little bit more of a color palette i thought was it um was needed and just tells a whole different story as well and then uh, again if you're looking on the, the top down view there you can see where all the sand blue and the gray of the sidewalk has been chipped away and smashed just by using those uh, curved tiles and, and quarter round and semi round tiles and then a little bit different take too on the awnings i use those uh, red bicycle racks again those dark red ones but then also took mini fig capes and just kind of weaved them and draped them around there so they look like ripped um, ripped coverings and uh, distressed ones and uh, some of the piping is on is used with uh, clip angles um, clip hinges and then tilted down just to look like all the metal's been uh, bent and reefed on and then uh, two uh, monochrome uh, minifigs actually uh, you can see them uh, there's a, a brown one and a tan one as mannequins for the mall that have just been thrown and disregarded into the streets and then a little vulture up there just kind of showing that nature is kind of slowly coming back and then another thing too the shop sign that was on the original showing part of it but not all of it just to kind of show the still the representation of of what the original mock was that's it for my modulars and now i'm just going to show you uh my latest creation that i did with a it is a fallout um Oh, sorry. We've got a couple more slides here. So this is more of the inside, just showing that uh, what people left behind. Somebody was cooking some chicken on a on a spit there, and the flames are still going. So everybody must have left in a hurry. Why they left in a hurry? I never came up with a story. I just left that again up to interpretation. Um, sleeping bag and a little pinata or a, a teddy bear of some for somebody. And these are some more top down shots of the different levels. So on the left is the ground floor and on the right is the second floor. And again, you can see like a mannequin in a backpack, candles melting and dripping everywhere. Again, any questions or anything you yeah. want me to go? Yeah, there's a good question here. Yeah. Um, as someone who likes all their Lego perfect, this concept never would have occurred to me in a million years. How do people react uh, to your different approach to Lego building? I get a lot of like really excited, like oohs and like an awe kind of, uh, kind of reactions, I guess, like, um, just really creative. Um, like a lot of people, uh, like that person asking the question said they would have never thought of that. Um, so, and I kind of just make it up as I go along too. So any criticism or anybody that, uh, has ideas or what they really liked, what they don't like, I, I always take, full heartedly just so I can improve upon it and just make it even that more realistic. Um, yeah, like, yeah, I'm not, I don't, uh, I like my mocks that I buy perfect for display and stuff like that. But when it comes to stuff like this, uh, yeah, I, I like to try to keep it as real and kind of, yeah, as possible. That kind of leads into this one. Um, with nature taking over, I'd expect to see some animals here and there even if it was just cats and skunks, did they not survive? Did they go off and create their own utopian societies? <laughs> um, well, in this one, I did add the vulture. If you can, you can see it up there on the, uh, on the, the second story there, um, overwatching. That was kind of the first one I put in. I never really occurred to put animals in because of the first two mocks that uh, modulars that were done were for fallout shelter. Um, and in the fallout world, animals are kind of very far and few between. And then the three or four that did survive are heavily mutated. And I just never really thought to try and build those. But uh, going forward with that question, that's a good thing to keep in mind that maybe with more and more mocks that have vegetation, I, uh, I should put together an apocalypse kind of little animal scenery to... Um, to add in between on the streets and stuff like that. So that was a good question. Thank you.
So, so here's a close up of the ground floor. Yeah, go for it, Jesse. Um, so love world building stories that allow open minded interpretation. How did you get into this genre? I'm a huge fan of Fallout, have been for a long time. Um, and uh, Fallout 3 came out during my dark ages when I wasn't building Lego. And when I got back into building Lego, I had finished Fallout 3 and was playing Fallout 4. And then the Fallout app came into um, on the phone there uh, right when Fallout 4 came out. And I had been building Lego for a few years and I was really into steampunk, steampunk and Western kind of stuff. So when the app came, uh, when the Fallout uh, Shelter app came out and it was on the same, it was in 2016. So it was on the same year or 2015, but Brick Can was right around the corner and I was looking to try to get a modular uh, collaborative for all of the attendees to help build and we could put together a, um, a full on uh, a full collaborative for the public to see. Uh, the shelter just presented itself right then and there and I was like, oh, this is perfect. I whipped together a few different ones. Actually, uh, do I have one? No, I don't. Sorry, I should have got one ready. Um, and it just worked. It worked very simple. We could, uh, everybody could build one. And as people showed up to the convention, we just click them all together and stack them high, like you saw in the first photo there. And then after that, I just had an absolute ball um, building the shelters. And then when the toppers came up the next year round, then I just had an absolute blast building the diner and the theater. And then it just hasn't really stopped there. So nice. Yeah. Did you make up stories about the many things that lived there as you were building, or did you have the concept completed before you started building? Um, a little bit of both. Um, when I choose a new modular, I kind of, I look at its key features of its original version and come up, okay, what can I do that separates each one from the next one so that they all have their own independent and unique stories. And then as I'm building, I'll come across stuff that I didn't see and then we'll tweak it along the way. The original concept is still always there, but we'll add or take away some stuff to finalize it. And then I'll always try to put one minifig into each modular. So it has its own little story, like the green grocer guy, the guy, just an adventure guy looking to use the bathroom, ran out of toilet paper, the diner, the ghoul there, just constantly trying to clean up the apocalypse, keep it clean. Can never happen. The theater has a, uh, has one guy living on the roof um, with a map and some supplies and he's just trying to look to get looking how to get out of Dodge. And then uh, this one is represented by mannequins, which are just, there's no minifigs. They all left and all that's left behind is uh, the remnants of things that looked like minifigs. So this is my, my final one I did. And this is a fallout themed one. And I had finished it for bricks cascade earlier in the year. Um, I just put it on here just to show some of the techniques that I was doing. So, uh, with the rock, like I used all wedges staggered and stacked to kind of give that rock slate that look, and then mixing it between the Brown and the grays, just to kind of break it up a little bit. And then the, the bull reeds, um, all dark colors kind of looked like they've maybe been, uh, uh, radiation uh, um, eradicated and stuff like that. And then the red truck, because the nuka cola is a bright red color, I toned it way down, but and then used like nougat colors and the, the dark medium flesh color on there uh, just to kind of break up and show rust. Uh, when you're working in red colors, using a mixture between dark red, regular red, brown, um, medium nougat and that dark orangey flesh color um, putting those all together in staggered patterns gives a really great rust appearance so I really do like working in red so when they come along and then uh, you can see the vegetation in the back there and then that was kind of that was the whole scene there to tie it off was the family that couldn't quite make it to the bomb shelter so Again, using cloth and capes and stuff like that to kind of show torn away and tattered clothing to show the skeleton underneath of the minifig. And using the Mr. Burns bear as the torn up ratty old bear that the, that the kid would have had that would have been pristine at the time. Thank you very much. Um, any questions? Anybody want me to go the, back to the, the last one I think that uh, we have time for is where can I find more documentation on your work, videos, pictures, etc.? Um, on my Flickr, uh, Keith underscore read or on Instagram, which is where I tend to be posting a lot of my stuff first and then everything moves over to Flickr. Um, I'm just Lego Keith read on Instagram 
I, I don't have any videos or anything like that, but if you hit me up on there, I can definitely send you some, uh, some photos of work or like how to do broken roads and or anything just to kind of show give you a closer up uh, when I'm able to but I have a lot more photos of each of these mocks on Flickr and on Instagram. Awesome well thanks for uh, showing us what your whole process is and and letting us behind the scenes a little bit that was really fun. Thank you very much.